Hey guys, this is Alex Slater. Welcome to the channel. Uploading a lot of videos just about China, not only about sneakers, everything you want to know about China. But if you're a sneakerhead and you're just tuning in, you want to stay tuned because I'm going to be talking about the truth about fake sneakers in China. Why are they made? How are they made? Where are they coming from? And how to categorize these fake sneakers from a different tier levels, okay? And why these sneakers are getting into your hands in the States. So stay tuned. Let's begin the video. Okay, before I jump into sneakers, I have to explain to you how China works and why all this is happening, okay? So, you guys, you live in the States, you guys see Chinatown all over, right? You go to New York, there's Chinatown, you go to LA, there's Chinatown. Those are Chinese people, they go there and they open up their own business, whatever it is, restaurants, and they do it very easy, right? It's not that easy for us. As a foreigner, if you come to China, and you want to open your own business, by law, you have to have a Chinese partner, period, period. There's no other way to put it. It doesn't matter who you are. So all the big brands, every big brand that you see has a Chinese partner, except for one lucky person. That's Elon Musk with Tesla. He has a free go pass with that. He doesn't have to have a partner, but that's because China wants electric cars here. They want to push electric cars and it is the number one electric car selling brand in China, even though there's like 30 other ones that are super good. But we're not here talking about cars, we're talking about sneakers. So let's go to the number one top sneaker brand, Nike. You would think Nike's here normal, right? No, Nike is in a partnership. They have to be in a partnership with a Chinese partner. And who is that Chinese partner? Guangzhou Guangdong Footwear Company, all right? Have you ever heard of them? Have you ever heard of them? Have you ever heard of them? No. These, this is a company that they just have a building. They sell footwear made in China. They have street footwear too. They sell in the streets. They have like a, like a flea market thing going on. And they are Nike's partner, okay? Meaning all the sales and all the revenue that Nike makes in China has to split the profits with them, okay? That's just how it works. So. Do you see what I'm saying now? Now just imagine how much information this Guangzhou Guangdong company could get in sneakers, in new releases, in materials, soles, shoelaces, etc. Just in total information. So what I'm trying to say is every time Nike's gonna do a campaign or gonna open up a new store or release some new sneakers, everything has to be done with the partner. And that just has a lot to say with that. So now what I really want to stress is about the categorizing these fake sneakers. How are they, ones are better than the others, all right? So I'm gonna go old school now, all right? So this is, these are terminologies that people used to use back in the 80s and the early 90s when it came to like Louis handbags and Chanel handbags and things like this. And now sneakers are so, so culture now. It's such a huge thing in all the countries all around the world, people are just calling them all fakes. Fakes, doesn't matter if it's a good fake or a bad fake, just fakes, which is true. No matter what, they are a fake, but they are categorized, okay? And some of them are made different. Some of them are made with the same materials as the real. All right, so first we're gonna start off with 1A, okay? 1A is a shoe that if you're a sneakerhead and you see the shoe up and display, you don't even have to touch it. You know from your little expertise that that is a fake sneaker, the materials look way off, the swoosh or the three lines or the fila f or whatever it is just looks so fake it looks terrible the guy's telling you 20 bucks you just know this is what we call 1a these are shoes that you see at flea markets or you see at the entrance of these uh, markets here in china all right there's people the reason they make these shoes is because there's countries that buy these shoes by tens of thousands to send them to places like South America, places like in the Middle East, okay, where people buy these shoes for very low budget. So that's why these shoes are made, okay? So the ones that don't sell, stay up on display here in China, they try to sell them, which is, hey, I get it. You didn't sell all your product, okay? So that's why these shoes are made. Next, 
we have double A, okay? Double A is a shoe where you look at it, you look at it at display, and you say, wow, that shoe looks pretty good. And then when you go to touch it, you say, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. What's going on? And then you put it on and you know it's fake. It hurts, it's not your right size. Then you start looking at the materials again. What is this? What's going on? Let me give you an example. This is a Yeezy 350. This is a double A. I bought these about a month ago. That You can tell the shape is just way off. The hump in the back doesn't do it. They cost me like what, like 30 bucks, not even. And hey, I'm in China. It's a different culture out here. That's what you're working with, all right? This is double A sneakers. And these are the sneakers, double A, that do get sent to South America and other countries that where these real stores don't exist, like Champs, Foot Lockers, and these hype stores don't exist. So double A sneakers are bought again by the tens of thousands. They're put in malls and they're sold as real sneakers. Consumer is told in the mall that they're real, that they're authentic, okay? So there's places in third world countries where there is nobody checking up if that Nike store is real, if that Reebok store is real. This just doesn't exist. If you're from the States, you've never traveled outside the States, the States is completely different. Same thing with England and Canada. It's completely different. There's a lot of rules when it comes to contraband. But in these third world countries, it's not it's not a big thing, contraband. And now we go to triple A, okay? I like to say triple A replicas, okay? These are shoes that are perfectly crafted and made to look identical as the real, okay? These are shoes that are made in factories where the machinery and everybody that works in there are doing actually a good job. Some of these factories could have ex-employees from Adidas and from Nike working there, knowing the contacts of where to get the, the real soles, the real materials, the real everything. It's just not made with the same exact machine, nor in the same organization as a real Nike factory would be, is what I'm trying to say, okay? So these shoes are actually handcrafted and made, and these are the most expensive ones you could see. Let me give you an example. But these are triple A, okay? So when it comes to hype sneakers, I'm gonna say the Jordan 1, Air Force 1, the Dunks, okay? SB, these shoes are old school style sneakers. So to replicate them is so easy because the technology is just not there. It's technology from the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. So to make these shoes actually is it hard, okay? So this is a triple A replica. It's very hard to spot. So how do you know that this shoe is real, this shoe is fake? Well, for one thing, you have to smell it. For one thing, you have to put it on, okay, and walk. And if you feel it a little off, it's fake, okay? If you feel it good, perfect, and it smells good, it's real, all right? But as you can see, even the, the embroiderment is perfect. I mean, and all well, it's a good shoe. The sole came out of these like two times already. It says the Air Force One in there. It's an okay shoe. But you know, in my head, I know, it's, I know it's fake. I know it's not real. I bought it knowing that. It's less than half the price of the real one. There you go. It's very easy to make these shoes, to make the soles, to cut the leather. Why do they make fake sneakers? Why are they making fake sneakers? I'm gonna give you my honest opinion okay so the sneakerhead culture has grown in the last 15 years in numbers that are just insane okay the hype shoes you want to stay up to the to the latest shoe the hype the next jordan the next dunk okay this is just getting way out of hand and me as myself and if you are also a, a sneakerhead from the 80s you know champs and Foot Locker were always your go-to places but now you go to those places they want to put your name in a raffle. You got to, your name's got to be called as a winner just to get a pair of shoes. And then you don't find them. And then you got to go to these hype stores and there they are for 3,500 bucks. I mean, come on. We're not going to go through all that. There's people that just, you know, buy the fakes for 120, 130, or even $200, you know, and to have the shoe that they want and, and not go through all the hassle, you know? And, and I'm not, you know, again, I'm not here promoting 
fake sneakers. I'm not here saying that you should buy fake sneakers and I am definitely not promoting people that sell fake sneakers to people and telling them that they're real. That's a lie. Okay, I do not do that. So please just get that clear right now on this video. A lot of you guys have kids, 15, 16 years old. They want this new shoe and it's, you know, it's sold out before you can even get to the mall. And you know, what can you do? You know, the culture has just gone too way overboard. The thing about the States is that it's that whole culture where people want to bully you about having fake shoes or call you out about having fake shoes, okay? And being here in China, that culture doesn't exist. I know people that own very luxurious cars and I've seen people that drive very luxurious cars and they wear fake sneakers and they wear it and it's just not a thing, it doesn't matter here. Here, wearing fakes is just completely normal. They could sell it here as well, just as much as they could sell it in the States. So that's another thing you guys have to have in mind. You know, the reason they're, they're, the fake sneakers are going to the States is because the demand is going so high and it's because they know that they're getting so good now that you could sell the AAA replicas as real. And that's what I don't like. I don't like people that do that, okay? So if you guys don't remember a few years ago, there was nine containers busted in New York. A large scale smuggling bust. The feds seized 300,000 pairs of fake sneakers that were headed into the tri-state. The group allegedly- This month, a group of Chinese smugglers were arrested trying to bring 300,000 counterfeit Nike sneakers, worth about $73 million, into New Jersey. The sneakers would then be taken to locations in Brooklyn and Queens, where they would sell for about $190 a pair. The 42 containers of sneakers came from China. And as you could see, those nine containers, what, had the street value of millions of dollars, okay? And those were gonna go everywhere. And these are perfectly handcrafted sneakers. Like I said before, you can't even tell the difference. The only way you could tell the difference on a fake sneaker is, I'm not even lying, maybe after a, a few weeks wearing them or, or even, even a few hours, a few days, depending how your foot feels, depending how heavy you are, depending how much you've had that shoe before, that same reference. It's, you know, it's you, you have to know what you're buying. There are consequences, okay? There are consequences, but if you're so hype up into the shoe and you really have to have it, then hey, that's on you, okay? Let me show you an example, all right? So here is a Yeezy 350 factory. Look at this, you would think you would see a sweatshop. You would think you see people sweating. You think you would see a hundred of little sew machines and people cutting with scissors this these materials but no this is such a business that look at these look at this these materials are getting cut with lasers this factory is pumping out 3,000 easy 350s a day all right if you don't think this is a business what do you think about this video this is real and these shoes are going out everywhere and then you know and out of those 3,000 maybe a thousand are going to the states because they're I, I know <laughs> The majority are getting sold here because these people sell them like crazy. All right. And is this a business? You know, how are these people who are making AAA replicas making the shoes before the actual date release in the States? How? How do they know it? Because somebody's buying off the plan, somebody's buying off the blueprint to the shoe at, the, at these sweatshops, they're paying for them. And, and they're making a shoe and they're getting to the customer who really wants that shoe before they could even buy it at the real Nike store. So it's just a business, it's a circle, it's never going to stop. So this is the question, what do you do when somebody's selling you a fake shoe and he's telling you it's real and you're feeling skeptical? First of all, let me tell you something. If you feel uncomfortable and if you, that shoe is giving you second thoughts, don't buy it, period. Don't buy it, it's not worth it. Because if you're getting second thoughts, it is fake, okay? If you're buying the shoe at SneakerCon and they have these these booths where, where these people could legit check them and all that, you know, I've seen them, some of them are good. Like there's this new girl now that she she's, you know, she's all over the internet for, for, for proof check, legit check and whatnot, and, you know, and I ain't trying to knock her, you know what I'm saying? She's doing her job, she's caught a couple here and there. And, uh, and you know, she's, you know, she's getting all the attention right now and that's good, you know, she works for eBay. And hey, we need people like that, okay? Because obviously she's not old. Somebody taught her well, or she's a sneakerhead so much that she's done her homework and she could actually pinpoint a fake shoe by the box, by the smell of the wrapping paper, by the plastic inside the box. 
but the plastic inside the shoe, okay? That is amazing. Now, do all the legit checkers of StockX have the same skills that she does? All right, guys, let's talk a little bit about quality control. And I wanted to tell you guys that don't get cheated out there. If you're talking to me, I will not cheat you. Of course, you could tell the difference, all right? This is the cheaper pair. This is the better pair, okay? Look at the difference. Look at the, let's start from the bottom. Look at the finishing in the, in the, in the clear bubblegum sole, pinkish bubblegum sole. And look at the finishing here in that paint. See that finishing? Very off. See that right there? all off and hear that see that when it comes to perfection look at that look at the bottom look how cheap that looks that that, that stamp it's not even indented like this one look at the letters way off there's not even the, it doesn't even look like the nike font okay and then look there's less hearts and you can see the pink itself it's clear all right look at the red but you could tell the difference in the quality and these are way better than these. So when you want to buy sneakers, it's up to you. You want 1A, AA, AAA. Everybody has a personal experience on how they know about shoes and how they know about fake sneakers. If you're a new sneaker head and you don't have that experience and you don't know what to look for, just keep doing your homework, keep doing your research. Keep watching videos just like this so you know what to look for and you, you know how, how to how the stitching is made, okay? So let, let me give you an example, okay? So these are real Jordans bought at the Jordan store, okay? So the reason I'm showing you these is because these are made as fakes as well, but these aren't fakes, okay? But you know what to look for. You know what to look for as a smell. Now, as a sneaker head, if I were to show you these, you just know that they're fake. Why? Because do they make easy 350s for babies? Hmm, no. But I got them because they're amazing. They look so good. They're perfect. They're soft. My daughter's jumping in these every day. They're, it's her favorite new shoes and I could see how soft the Boost technology is. And it says Adidas Yeezy in there and they don't exist. That's what makes it even cooler, all right? I have to share with you how I know so much about fake sneakers and how I know about real sneakers and how I could pinpoint sneakers. I could tell a fake sneaker, all that when people talk about, oh, you can't tell they're fake if the guy's walking by, I could tell, all right? You have to have an eye for this thing. There's people that could tell fake Ferraris, you know, they make replica Lamborghinis. There's people that could call that out in a, in a second. There's people that are into Rolexes and they could call out a fake Rolex. I can't do those things, but sneakers, I can. And this is why. I grew up in the 80s in the United States, okay? And if you did as well, and you were buying shoes at Athlete's Foot, Foot Locker, and Champs, you know this, what you don't experience anymore. You know that when you're in the mall and you're three or four stores away from Champs or Foot Locker, you could smell the shoes, okay? You could smell the shoe and you're like, oh, there must be a Foot Locker around here. There it is, you pinpoint it. As you're walking to the store, the smell is getting stronger and stronger and it's the best smell you could ever smell in the world. It's so good, it's just as good as a new car smell. And you walk into Foot Locker and it's just like, ah, oh, I smell it all. Then you walk inside and you're so happy and you get your new shoes and you put your face in the shoe and you smell that. And you go home and you every morning, when you before you go to school, you smell that smell. And every day you're smelling that smell, putting on that shoe and that smell is going away a little and a little and a little and around 15 days, the smell's completely gone. And you know as a kid that your brand new shoes aren't that new anymore. That, that smell, smell is, is so, so important, important because, because that, that smell doesn't, doesn't exist. exist. You go into you go these hype sneaker, sneaker stores, that, that smell that isn't there anymore. That's how I grew up. There was no fake sneakers back then. So I grew up in an era where it was just real sneakers getting the real quality, feeling real sneakers. My feet never felt fake sneakers. So it was the smell, knowing the quality, knowing the leather, okay? I'm here as a sneaker head, I know sneakers. I'm here dealing with sneakers. Uh, China has amazing Jordan stores, amazing Adidas, Nike stores. Fila stores are here everywhere. They have Fila Fusion, Fila Kids, Fila Original, Fila Classic. They're all categorized in different stores. And, and I'm so glad that um that I'm living here and I could see the different fake sneakers at at, uh, at the factories and um 
and how they're made and why they're 1A, why they're double A, why they're triple A, what, you know, how, how these factories cut costs, you know, they cut costs to make a fake shoe that just looks good. Like, a so what's my message? Just categorize these shoes, 1A, double A, triple A, okay? Once you start categorizing fakes, you'll start learning how fakes are, are worked within yourself. You could get fake shoes at a sneaker meetup or at a sneaker con or something like that. This is where you need to, to, to use your skills. And this is why I'm telling you to categorize these fake sneakers. Talk to the guys so you know when they look real fake, be like, hey man, these are double A fakes, they're not even triple A. So at least try to sell me a triple A fake, you know, a triple A replica. You know, don't lie to me. Or these are one A fakes. You know, categorize these fake sneakers. Act like you know what you're talking about. Look at them straight in the eye, tell them you're not a fool. Just don't get caught up in the hype. If you guys are interested in looking at fake sneakers and just you wanna see what's fake sneakers or what real sneakers they sell here in China, I do have an Instagram page. It's called Kicks by Slater, okay? I don't sell fake sneakers on there. I'm not trying to sell you fake sneakers, okay? I'm uploading videos on the real Jordan stores here, the real Nike stores, because they're amazing, they're huge, and I go there all the time. Here's the thing, that whole sneakerhead culture here in China is not as big as it is any, uh, in the States. There is no lines the night before, there is nothing like that. It's just, if you get there, you're first come, first serve, just the way it was in the 90s in the States, okay? So, to this day, today's what, June 7th? Today's June 5th, all right, sorry. Today's June 5th and I could still get the 11 cool grays at the Nike store, at the Jordan store, like nothing. I mean, it's just, it, the shoes stick around, they stay around the stores as it used to be back in the days. So that's one thing I like about China here when it comes to sneakers, all right? Sometimes I do go to the markets or I do go to the factories and I do upload videos. So if you guys just wanna see how shoes are being made here in China and what, what's going on with China, follow my page on Instagram, Kicks by Slater. Again, I'm not trying to sell you fake sneakers and I'm not trying to tell you sneakers are real and sell them to you as fake. That's not my thing. I'm just uploading videos and I want you to see the video. This is Alex Slater, checking out. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. I don't know how many more sneaker videos I will be posting. Like I said, this is just a American living in China channel. Okay, I'm posting everything about China, lifestyles here. I've been here five years living with my family and I'm having a great time. So if you guys wanna follow my page, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time, bye-bye.